Our discussion today is going to be on television and the American family, and I'm really excited about talking about this subject because it's the Andy Griffith Show, a show that started in 1960, went to 1969, and the one episode that I'm looking at specifically is the first season, episode 12, The Stranger in Town. Now, what makes this really an interesting topic and an interesting episode is the fact that Mayberry, which in North Carolina is fictitious, it really never did exist, was something that was created by Andy Griffith, the main character of the show, the creator of it. In fact, uh, a lot of people don't realize they owned half of the show, which gave him a lot of power to be able to create, design, bring in the characters he wanted to do, model whatever idea that he had, and he would bring it to the screen. Well, in saying that, he also knew how much tension there was in America at that time. Because in 1960, we not only got a, our first president that was 35 years of age, John F. Kennedy, but we also inherited something else. A war began, the Vietnam War. So there was a lot of attention in America at that time. In fact, campuses were in uproar over what was going on, and protesters were everywhere. So there was a lot, a lot to be said for the unsteady nature of America. But here came the Andy Griffith Show, this down-to-earth show that uh, centered around a sheriff who didn't even wear a gun. Kind of ironic, isn't it, that here we're talking about Vietnam and people, thousands upon thousands of people dying, and here you have a sheriff in a town that thought that his character was enough to get him through any situation that he was going through. Now his deputy though, on the other hand, Barney Fife, what a character he was, Don Knox, uh, who went on to do many films and were, was quite successful. But Andy knew just how critical it was to have the right characters and make them as real as possible, even though Mary Mayberry really wasn't real. So in this episode, Stranger in Town, a gentleman comes in by the name of Ed Sawyer. Well, we can see the scene set up where they're at the barbershop, which is rather typical of a small town. That's probably where you got a lot of your local gossip, was going to the barber and being able to talk about what had just happened with Aunt Millie or what had just happened with Uncle Joe. And so while they're sitting there, uh, the bus stops right in front of uh, the barbershop and out steps a man that no one knew. He's the stranger in town. Now, you gotta understand something. Even today, I mean, decades later, people want to surround a town like this or be a part of this fictitious town called Mayberry. But what Andy brought to the screen, what Andy brought to America was this moral, wholesome, if I could use that word, uh, way of living. And so in walks what we think would be anyone welcome to be a part of Mayberry. But so you see this tension arise because they built this really strong sense of community. I've lived in small communities, in small towns, and trust me, uh, there's many generations there. So it can be somewhat difficult when you see uh, some stranger walk in and just this willingness to accept just anyone. And so that's really what began to happen. The tension grew almost instantly in the episode as they see this stranger walk off. And then what does he do? He comes right into the barbershop in the mainstream of their way of life and just begins to talk to Andy like he's known Andy for years. And he knew that Barney was the deputy sheriff, even though Barney had the, the typical barbershop cloth over him disguising what he really was. So, of course, with, uh, with Don Knox, he was one that anything, there had to be something behind it. He seemed to be somewhat cynical of anything, which made his character so delightful. Even though how wrong he may have been, he always thought the other side of it. And so this stranger, Ed, comes in and he just begins to introduce himself to everybody, knows all their uh, quirks, every weakness that they might have. Now, you might think, how would have that been possible? You gotta understand, there was a time in small towns that to them, the newspapers were what we might call Facebook today. It had all this information that was what was going on from the minute things to major things. Well, for them, major might be a cow breaking out of the fence and running in front of uh, uh, the farmer's tractor, just something like that, but it would all be reported. So this Ed Sawyer was reading all of this 
and just realized he wasn't a part of something he wanted to be a part of. So that's why he came to Mayberry. Now, what's to me interesting is the fact that Mayberry wasn't as friendly as you would have thought. Uh, they were rather uh, afraid, for better terms, of what was the intentions of this person, especially that this person would know everything about them and they knew nothing about the stranger. How is it today that that kind of happens to us, that we can be so welcoming and inviting of people within our comfort zone, and yet when they step in, maybe that's challenged uh, a bit, you know? And so Mayberry was challenged. And I love how Andy Griffith wanted to do that. He wanted to make Mayberry a place that was as real as anything else. So as perfect as it seemed, there was still a bit of imperfection with Mayberry and their characters. And especially when someone comes in and, and they want to be a part of it. So it's really good to know that when I look at a, a film like, you know, a television show like Andy Griffith and, and I see what it's all about, even for me personally, I grew up in the 60s as a boy. Uh, I was born in 1960 and, and so I remember watching these shows. Obviously in the late 60s I probably would have been catching up with reruns. Uh, but I got to watch a lot of these shows and they meant so much to me because here's Andy uh, raising a son by himself, which by the way, we really never know anything about the mother, uh, but I myself was raised just by a dad. So there's kind of like that connection, you know, personally. And, and watching Opie grow up, it gave me a sense of how I could be able to succeed in life. Uh, and so there's a lot of connection personally to me when I, when I think of the Andy Griffith show. And I know it was to many other people. In fact, today many people just, they buy the series, they buy the entire series and they're a part of it. So my thoughts on the Andy Griffith show really relate to the fact that I believe that there is a time today when people want to go back to Mayberry. With all that's going on, they do want to be a part of, it, of a simple time. A, a time on, of honesty, uh, of character, of integrity. And that was one thing that the Andy Griffith Show really strived to do. Quite honestly, I think that's why even today, from 1960 to you know 2016, I think that's why today we have a series that maybe it has age because of the technology of how it was uh, created and how it was written and, and how it was filmed, but it still holds to something that are core values to us in our human nature because we want there to be a place like Mayberry within our own lives. So I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and the discussion and, and I hope it causes you to think a little bit more that sometimes these sitcoms are, are much deeper than we could possibly imagine. Thank you.